Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Every Friday, we are here to answer any questions you have, uh, have awesome topics with great questions. Uh, and uh, today, it is the first day of Q4 2021. So Todd and Deb, can you believe how fast this year has gone by? No, but I think I say that every year. Um, but this year, especially just, you know, getting back and doing events was awesome seeing people, <laughs> um, but it has, it's gone by super fast. I, I say it every year too, but it, it does seem like it just accelerates every year. It just goes faster and faster and faster. Well, and I think as a parent, you see it also, but I, I feel like certainly the health situation we had, there's no doubt that that felt us feel like time slowed down for a while and the mortgage industry was so fast. And I think with everything you know, that I've been so fortunate to be part of this community and win by noon and the modern mortgage summit, modern real estate summit. I mean, having so much going on this year, it feels like there's just not enough time in the day between that and, and everything else. Yeah, it's so true. It's like when you have your first kid and everyone's advice, they tell you, oh, this is going to fly by. Like you're going to miss these days. Kids grow so fast. And when you're like in the grind and you're like, I don't think I'm ever going to get out of this newborn phase. <laughs> like it's taking way too long until you stop and pause and kind of look back. You're like, like my youngest son, it's his birthday today. He turned seven. He's he's a legend. I gave birth to a legend, guys. <laughs> but I, I think, that. wow, he's I love already that name. yeah, he's <laughs> already seven. Well, do you know how hard it was to name him when his older brothers are Boston Champ? Love that. Uh, so legend is seven today. Happy birthday, legend. Yeah. Uh, so so guys, the the topic today is going to be reflections from Q three. So what are what are some things that you have gotten clear on, you know, it could be takeaways, could be epiphanies, could be um, concepts of clarity, and then intentions. What, what are your cue for intentions? What are some things that you're going to start doing? What are some things you're going to stop doing? Uh, you know, all three of us have some, some reflections and intentions that we want to share. But let's, let's start with you, Todd. Deb, Deborah and I will interview you, and then we'll come to Deborah, and the three of us will all share our intentions. If anybody has a question during the call, put your question in comments, or if you have a big takeaway, you know, something you want to document that is valuable, put that down below. So, so Todd, reflections. You know, it's so funny that it's the beginning of, of Q1, and it's a lot of people think just since I've had Win by Noon and it's a quarterly planner that I've, I've only lived quarterly for four years since Win by Noon has come out, but I've lived quarterly for over a decade. When I first uh, started getting coached by Building Champions, they came up with a one page simple business plan. And that was what I was known for in the local real estate community. I would go out and I would teach it starting in Q4 every year. And I would teach and coach and then hate to say it because it's hard to do. I hold realtors accountable to their plan. And that was my unique value proposition. That's how when I went out and I got new real estate agents, you know, for the year was, was looking at their plan and, and then going back and visiting with every quarter, right? My best agents, I, I checked in with weekly. Um, the other agents that weren't kind of the best agents, you know, I might check in with them every two weeks or every three weeks. And then, you know, got belly to belly with them all quarterly to help them review their plan and make sure they were going. And so as I reflect on it, we've had three quarters already and we've all been running so fast. So my, my real reflections are, you know, how are you doing, right? 85 days till Christmas, right? We know everyone's going to shut it down. We've got Thanksgiving in the middle. So you don't really even have 85 days till Christmas to get stuff done. I kind of think it's about 60 work days that people are going to have between now and the end of the year. And that's an interesting number. And so I always just start off with what are the questions I'm going to ask myself? And, you know, I've talked through like a keep, improve, start, stop before. And I'm, you know, I, I always fall back on that one, but I think there's other questions that you might want to be asking now, right? There's no doubt that for most people in the loan business, business has kind of slowed down a little bit. Most people I'm talking to said the first half of the year was just crazy. And that was, you know, back to back from, you know, the previous eight months of 2020 that were crazy. And everyone needed this breather of Q3. And if that was you and you took a breather, kudos to you. If you were the one who was still running 150 miles an hour because you had so much business, kudos to you. But I think you have to stop and just look at how am I doing, right? Hopefully you set a goal at the beginning of the year. And now's your time to say, okay, I said I was going to do X number of loans and look at it. See, are, how are you doing? Are you on track? I know all you win by noon users, you know, because you're looking at it on a monthly and a quarterly basis. But I mean, for everyone here, you need to look at your numbers and see how you're doing, because ultimately you've got 60 days of work to make the magic happen, not just between now and the end of the year for closings, but really you're building your momentum in Q4, 
that's going to actually carry on into 2022. And the, the, key for me always is what I know is that the numbers don't lie, right? So when you look at your numbers, you know, if you're like, hey, I have all the loans I can handle, Todd, like, don't even talk to me about this. Great. You know, still stay checked in. But I think most of us are in that, in that kind of middle between space. Like we're not dead. We're not just sitting there twiddling our thumbs every day, but we're not so busy that we can't figure out what it is it that we can do now in order to, to go forward. And I would say that what Q3 proved to me was two things. Number one is if you actually pay attention, you make the commitment um, to being great. And so for me, greatness, especially in this group, is a TCA a day, right? Those of you who watch, we had nine weeks where we did a TCA a day mastermind call. We had uh, Jeremy on there. We had Deb. Uh, we had Dave, myself, we had different people on there. Walt was his brainchild, Walt Schultz, and he was the consistent one through it. But what we learned from there is that the people who actually did a TCA a day had amazing results. And it was funny because Jeremy and I had the exact same takeaway. My takeaway was from the people who showed up, whether they showed up infrequently or every week, was that accountability matters, right? The numbers don't lie. And so the people who went through it and actually recorded their activities and looked at their numbers had a 50% conversion rate increase. Okay, well, let me say that again, 50% conversion rate increase. Now, who out there, let's pretend you only got a 25% increase. Like how good would that be to your bottom line and to your Christmas shopping when you're going out there for your family? I think that that was really huge. And then there was also a dramatic improvement in pricing. And when there's a dramatic movement in pricing, Dave used a word that I'm, that I'm stealing, which is there was less tension in the transaction. When you guess at what loan rate you're going to give your client, uh, un they, unconstructive tension. Remember, tension, oh, unconstructive tension. Tension, tension is right. good. Tension is good. Constructive tension is good. Unconstructive tension is bad. All right, there we go. So I just say it all is less stress, right? And I know as a loan officer, when I was doing loans, I, I was trying to guess, oh, I like low cost loans. I'm going to offer my client the higher rate with the lower cost. And then the client would come back and go, oh, you know what? I saw I get 2.99 at Quicken with, you know, 17 points. And, you know, people who do TCAs and show them those low rate, high cost loans, um, as well as the higher rate, low cost loans win because you've given them options. You have less stress and guess what? Less price exception. So it makes your branch manager happy. If you're a branch manager, it should make you happy for your loan officers are doing it. Um, and so that was such a huge takeaway. And, you know, I believe that you have to choose whether you're going to um, have it matter, whether you're going to be part of it or not. And self-accountability is something I think that's really hard. Um, I can't wait at the Modern Mortgage Summit next week. Um, Jeremy Forcier unpacks in a, in a sub 18 minute TED Talk style presentation, how he goes through his personal self-accountability. And that is going to be a huge blessing for our community. However, accountability matters. And Dave used the word up front, you have to set your intentions. And I believe you've got to be intentional. And so my challenge to everybody for this quarter, and I'm going to run a challenge over in the Win by Noon community, and you're all invited, Win by Noon user or not. And I'm going to run a 60 TCA challenge over the next quarter, and I'm going to have calls in there to support it. Because the other part of what I'm really passionate about is the CMA a day side. We had um, a lot of you in the community, um, Tammy Cranich, Aaron Johnson were the ones that kind of stand out because I helped launch their groups. Um, I launched two new groups yesterday for Stephanie and Walt that are loan officers that are helping their real estate agents by doing CMA a day. And I'm just going to try to help everyone by giving you a form where you can bring all of your real estate agents and I can pour into you and I can pour into them so that it makes it a little easier for you to drag them along. Jeremy said, you don't want to hold your real estate agents accountable because then they don't want to call you when they don't do it. Um, and so I'm going to start it off on Monday. I'll throw a Zoom link below. I'm going to interview Jimmy Burgess. Now he's the guy that was the CMA a day guy who got $11 million worth of listings by doing 72 CMAs in Q4 of 2018. Um, and since then, he's closed almost $10 million more of transactions without doing any follow-up just from those original 72. So of course, then the overachievers are saying, Todd, you just said 60, Jimmy did 72. So the overachievers are going to do 72 TCAs or 72 CMAs over this time. But I've just been trying to figure out, because I'm crystal clear based on the results of the realtors who went through the CMA Day Challenge, based on the loan officers who've gone through the TCA Day Challenge, if you are intentional, if you commit the time, if you write it in your calendar that I'm going to do this 60 days between now and Christmas, I think not only are you going to have a little fatter wallet to uh, take the, the family out uh, on a, that big vacation and to see Santa Claus, but I think more importantly, you're going to have some crazy momentum heading into 2022. So that's what I'm super stoked about. Well, that, of course, in the Modern Mortgage Summit next week and the Modern Real Estate Summit in five weeks.
Hey, Todd, real quick. You said you're interviewing him Monday. I'm going to interview him Monday at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific. He wanted three centrals when he was available. So okay. it's a little bit of an afternoon call for you guys. I will put the Zoom link in there and I'll live stream it into the Win by Noon uh, Facebook group. But I will get the Zoom link in once uh, I stop talking. I will throw it into both chat in the uh, Zoom folks and I'll throw it down into the, the Facebook feed. But it's, it's going to be super exciting because Jimmy will unpack for you and your realtors how he built the CMA. The thing I found in all of my interview, all of my conversations with real estate agents is they're overwhelmed like loan officers get with the technology. Like, how do I do it? They're so busy trying to figure out the how that they just don't actually take action and get it done. And so he's going to walk through how he did it. And he's been training it. He's a leader now at Berkshire Hathaway and he's been training it for the last two years. So I decided instead of me as a mortgage guy trying to tell you how the guy who essentially I heard his story, I didn't connect the dots that it was Jimmy Burgess, heard his story, heard CMA, thought TCA day, created the poster that all of you have bought. And um, now I'm actually going to interview the guy who's the guy behind it because I wasn't as smart as Tammy Crane. She Googled it and said, hey, Todd, I found the guy. And I'm like, what? There's a guy? And then Aaron Johnson, who told me about him, was like, Todd, I told you that's what his name was. And apparently I missed it. That's incredible. I, I think... Um... That was kind of my biggest takeaway too, Todd. And I'm curious when you have that call, I am dying to know how does he get the agents to do? Because that's the feedback I've been hearing from a lot of the loan officers I work with. Um, they will go and they deliver the TCAs and they just, and kind of like what we experienced in August, we saw that there were people who attended and then they kind of fell off. Um, anything that you want to say about that, just with reflecting on our challenge that we did in August and September and your kind of coaching tips of how you help people become more self-accountable and not dodge you? Well, I think that's, you know, the hardest part is that real estate agents, most of them, we all know, don't take it as a business as much as you do, right? There, a lot of them, it's three quarters of their time and a quarter of time they're doing something else. And it's, it's always the ones who treat it as a business who have the highest levels of success. And it, it is hard to get them and loan officers to actually commit to doing it, right? And so I think it's always this idea of, um, of, are you willing to commit? So I loved it. You know, I've got a, a small group that I, that I was not able to fire when I stopped coaching, doing a uh, group coaching that I love. And I got a text into that group this morning, um, from Michelle and she did 60 TCAs uh, last quarter. And I said, that's perfect. Cause that's the number I'm going to hold everyone to for this next quarter. And I love it when someone takes that, I didn't ask her how many TCAs did you do? I didn't commit her to doing that. She committed herself to do it and she actually, you know, got it done. And so the way that I remind people, if you're truly going to get it done and you don't have a coach who you're going to have to report it to and feel bad, if you're not going to show up to a mastermind like we did, where someone had to say, oh shoot, you know what? I didn't do a TCA every day, right? If you're not going to do it that way, you have to just put it in your life. It has to be in your calendar. You have to say, hey, when I get off this call today, before I do anything else, I'm going to do a TCA and then push it out and then move on. And then you can do the rest of your day. So for me always, right? win by noon, every day is for winning by noon, is do that first, right? So I would personally, if it was me, I would be looking um, today and over the weekend and I'd identify who it is that I that I can do TCAs for, right? If you haven't done them for all your uh, leads, all your pre-approvals, that's just really easy. Um, I think if you actually spent some time, uh, someone mentioned on the, on the call on Tuesday that they would go in and look at all their clients from the last two years with PMI, right? And do a TCA for every one of them. There's people in your database if you just take the time. And then if you're new, and you're like, well, who am I going to call, right? Dave Galagos did a great uh, interview with uh, Mr. Dave Savage here. And he talked about how he has all these new loan officers and literally just pick up the phone. And you're going to call a friend and say, hey, you know, I know I didn't do your mortgage, but I'm trying to learn how to do this thing called the total cost analysis. It's the coolest digital spreadsheet. It doesn't just tell you payment and uh, cash to close and um, interest rate. It actually gives you the total cost over time. And I'm trying to perfect how to do that. And I would love it if you would share your mortgage state with me so I could prepare one for you so I can get some practice. And, you know, again, if you're new and you don't have someone to call, that's an easy phone call to make because people are going to want to help you and be successful. So long answer to freaking get it scheduled, figure out what the hurdles are going to be. If you don't know how to use Mortgage Coach, then go to mortgagecoach.com. And there's all sorts of classes there on the YouTube channel. Dave's got you know, a gajillion new loan officer ways to get set up. The support team there is amazing. And, uh, you know, stop the excuses, but I would have it in my calendar block. If you're a ninja, you know, you can block 15 minutes to get it done um, every morning next week. If you're not a ninja block, you know, two hours to learn how to be a ninja and then block 30 minutes every day to get it done and just be pig headed that this is what I'm going to do. Be super intentional and you'll get it done. Sweet.
Todd, you uh, you killed it, man. I took a lot of notes. Um, we also got some really good engagement in the community. Uh, we we had um, top realtor Glenn Bell, Glenn Bill, weigh in. So Glenn, it's good to see you. In- Glenn Bill, I'm gonna get Glenn Bill on one of my calls. Glenn, yeah, keep yeah. on one of my calls. Glenn, if you're still listening to this, Todd wants to include you in one of the calls. Uh, but he said, uh, fourth quarter is where champions differentiate and win. Uh, we all know that, uh, but do we all do that? Uh, Frank Blakely said, good morning, Frank. Uh, Frank is a $100 million producer out of Southern California and a total baller. Uh, Glenn said, let's do it. So we still have him on. So game on. We'll get okay, you so when are y'all doing it, Todd? Let's get Glenn to commit. He, uh, he just committed. Uh... Well, I'll, okay. I'll, hey, Glenn, I'll shoot you over an email and then uh, figure out what uh, what call we can get you on. And I'm going to probably rotate. It, it's it's really bad because I actually have my Facebook post ready to go, but I, I didn't uh, I didn't post it prior to this since I was going to roll it out. But, you know, there's part of me that thinks we should have the real estate agents compete with the loan officers, like not necessarily mm-hmm. for number of total that they do, but just to actually say I did one a day. Um, but I don't want to really put them against each other. What I want to really do is have all of you as loan officers come aside, come alongside of our real estate community and help them get better at their craft, help them see, even if they're only a part-time real estate agent, that if they just do one CMA day, they're going to have, you know, huge, um, you know, huge opportunity to, you know, be, you know, be successful. One of the women on uh, the call that one of the calls that we launched yesterday, um, you know, she was really um, upfront, you know, it was uh, Stephanie Smith out of uh, Reno, Las Vegas area. Stephanie, um, this lady said, hey, I'm not, I'm not doing any. I'm brand new. I don't have a lot of clients. I don't have a lot of people. I was an x-ray technician. And I kind of gave her that same, hey, give them a call and, you know, same kind of speech I just gave. And, and it's great because now Stephanie can come alongside of her. And so I want, I think that's the biggest takeaway that I would like all you to have is to come alongside of your real estate agents and then give them grace when they say I did zero and then figure out, okay, well, great. What would it take for you to do one next week? Um, and then great. Then then next week, can I get you to do two? And you know, even if they get twenty done in a quarter, they're going to be building momentum heading into twenty twenty two. My belief is, though, the people who do sixty, you know, kind of boom, give you a, a Dave Savage fist bump. I think those are the people who are going to crush Q four and really have uh, a crazy launch lift as they head into next year. Yeah, no, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, in Zoom, we had Eddie say, totally awesome. Looking forward to the challenge. So Eddie, we're stoked you're on the team. We had Jeremy say, how do I get involved in the TCA Day Challenge? Todd told you it's going to be on Monday. Uh, tune in to the Win by Noon Facebook group. So if you're not already a member, uh, go to Facebook, put in Win by Noon Mastermind, and it's in there. Uh, Philip said, I am new to this. What is a TCA? So, so Philip, I'm not going to get into um, great deal on that in this call, but I will um, show something on my screen really quick. And uh, we have a new loan officer playlist. When I'm not talking, I'll put a link to that down below. And, and this is a playbook for new loan officers. So I don't know if you're a new loan officer or you're just new to our community. Uh, I would recommend, even if you've been doing the business for a decade or two, there's a lot of gold in this new loan officer playlist, or excuse me, playbook. And, and if you read this and you tune into some of this, you're going to know what a TCA is. It stands for total cost analysis. And that is the, the deliverable that mortgage coaches give to a family. Uh, but check out this playbook and I'll put a link down below in it. Um, hopefully that will help. Also, I interviewed Kelly Zitlow uh, on Tuesday of this week. And we had a seven minute conversation around what is a mortgage coach? And we created some micro content on that. It's in this Facebook group. And it's also at the top of our YouTube channel. So listen to that too. And your question will be answered, Phil, Philip. So, so my takeaways from listening to you just now, Todd, were greatness equals a TCA a day. Uh, accountability matters. That was definitely a takeaway I had. And what I heard you say is the intention that you're going to start doing is a weekly group coaching accountability session through the end of the year in your win by noon group, right? I mean, that's, that's your intention. Yeah. 12 weeks. I'll do a weekly call. It may, my, my goal now, since Jimmy Burgess picked one o'clock on Mondays, my goal is going to be to make it one o'clock PST on Mondays. Now I have to break that to my family because in two weeks I'll be in New York on that Monday. So that week may move. But if you sign up on the zoom link, it'll, 
give you the, you know, the update for all the, all the calls. And my intention is going to be to be in there weekly with some interview, some encouragement, some accountability to help you as a loan officer, and then also help you help your real estate agents come across this line with a goal of everyone in the community to do 60 TCAs or CMAs over the next 12 weeks before Christmas, because I'm not going to push us to the end of the year. And I took out the days for Thanksgiving that I don't want to work so that you don't have to work. And, you know, who knows, maybe we'll find some fun prizes or something. But ultimately, in the end, what I want is I'm going to post in there every day who did a TCA or CMA. And I'm hoping that, you know, hundreds of people say I did one. And I, I'm hoping that people say I didn't do one so that they're in there checking in with their accountability and saying, OK, crap, I'm going to tell when I didn't do one today. And I'm going to make sure that as you know, come, you know, whatever, I'm going to make sure that I do one tomorrow. Because that's ultimately what you want. You don't want to be that person who commits to it and doesn't do it. And transparently, if you want to commit to 50, I'm okay with that too. Just make a commitment and then be intentional about how you're going to, you're going to make that commitment. So I would just go in there, whether it's in your win by noon plan or whether it's an outlook, and I would just put in there a time block that says TCA time, and I would get that done. Love it. And I also took a note that there's less than 60 work days left until 2022. That was a, a that stark, that's a stark reminder, guys. Like every day matters. Uh, if you want to close this year strong, you want to prepare for next year, uh, you don't have as much time as you think you do. So uh, I'm going to be doing some planning over the weekend because uh, I was I was thinking I had more like 90 work days, but you're, you're right. It's less than 60. Uh, I was not thinking right. Uh, so cool on that. So Deborah, let's transition to you. What are your reflections from Q3 and what are your intentions for Q4? So I went back and looked at um, July, August, and September, those months specifically, since that's, you know, Q3. And July is always my month that I dedicate more time, you know, with the family and the kids because they just get out of school. And I'm not always great at uh, that integration piece where I, I tend to be a little bit of a workaholic. It's my life's best therapy, but I did unplug and take some time. We went to the lake and, um, you know, so I was, I was proud of that. And then, you know, August, we had the Amplify Live event, which was incredible. Um, it was the first event I think I had gone to besides, you know, us doing the Modern Real Estate Summit where it was, you know, just us at the studio, but where we had people all together. And it, that event reminded me how much of the personal development side um, is important. And the, the quote, I don't know who said it, but your business grows to the extent that you do is essential. Um, and I was proud of Denise and her team. She brought all of her, her ops, um, her assistants, her production partners. And her biggest takeaway was, you know, they're, she can keep pouring into herself, but if she doesn't bring her teammates along, there tends to be this gap and you're always trying to you know, fill the gap and you can get everybody on the bus at the same time and moving at the same time, it helps. So, um, and then, you know, obviously we kicked off the TCA a day challenge for August and September. And again, likewise with Todd, my biggest takeaway there was um, not only the accountability piece, but I feel like the number one mistake loan officers make with TCAs is they keep it a one-to-one. -one. And we already know the power of a TCA when you're kneecap to kneecap with a client or with an agent. I mean, it, it helps with conversion. It helps with pricing. It helps with the relationship building, with trust, with clarity. It's also one of the single best brand differentiators that I help my clients do on social media. Um, but they seemed to be all lacking the one to many. So that drove my intentions for the fourth quarter. And I've been working with Scott Nicholson quite a bit and learning Lender Launchpad, which I'm super impressed uh, with how the TCA and the CMA can kind of come together. And just the overall product of having your own website that has your you know, reviews on the same site as where they can go to the CMA and they can see the TCA. Um, so I'm really pushing hard for my clients to be more intentional about doing the one to many with the TCA, because it already shows how you think differently and how you're different. So the, the gentleman who asked, what is a TCA? I would, I would highly encourage you to do some research on that because to me, I don't know how else you really differentiate and not become like the robots out there. If you're not showing people their options over time, 
asking the right questions, making them feel heard, making them feel seen, and giving a true financial strategy in ways, kind of like what Keith Collins said on our interview, that they don't even know to ask. And I think that's the biggest win, is when you can solve problems they don't even know they have, really. Um, and then the other, what I love about Q4, and I think a lot of loan officers, especially right now after 2020 and just being, you know, going at full speed, they have admitted um, maybe they haven't been doing their annual asset reviews as well. They haven't been doing their data database calls as well. They've been kind of in survival mode. So this time of year is the best time to reconnect with your sphere and with your database because you have, I always joked, Halloween was my favorite time to uh, door knock because everybody opens the door. <laughs> I did the bold 100. If you guys remember uh, when we interviewed Cody Gibson, where you literally, I door knocked on way more than hundred doors because people don't answer doors anymore, but on Halloween, they sure do. So I used to leverage out my kids and put, you know, information in a little Ziploc baggie with candy and put, you know, rates are spooky low, no tricks, just treat something, you know, like that. And they would actually hand out candy for every door that they would go knock on. Um, so that's just one thing with the holidays, but then too, there's Thanksgiving. What are you grateful for? You could go and you could call and just not make it about mortgage. Maybe it's not an annual asset review, but these are, these give you good reason to reach out to just say, Hey, you know, are you traveling this year? What are you grateful for? Considering last year, a lot of families couldn't travel and they didn't get to spend time together. You know, can I send you a pie? Is there, what are y'all doing for Christmas? Are y'all traveling? You know, some loan officers I have, they have a Santa Claus that comes out and allows the families to take pictures. And so there's been this hesitation with some of my clients when they're thinking, oh, I don't know how I'm going to start doing, you know, if I want to add them to a Facebook group, because a lot of them are getting into Facebook groups and they realize maybe I should have a Facebook group for agents and a Facebook group for my database. But I feel weird going back now and asking them to join because I've really stopped staying in touch. And I'm like, okay, well, the first part is awareness. And now you've got to take action on the awareness. And what are you going to do about it? Because these are people that have already earned trust. And so holidays are the perfect time to really build that community, that tribe, not just from a digital standpoint, but I mean, like getting knee deep with the community that you serve and the families that you've helped buy homes and all the roofs that you just look out your window there's a little bit of an obligation there. And how are you going to keep that tribe going? And if you haven't, it's okay. Use fourth quarter to get back in the game. I love that. I love that. I think that's so good. I, I love the, one of the last things you said is take action on the awareness, right? I mean, I think you just laid out some great opportunities for people to connect. And I, it still goes back. I still think you know, like Deborah just said, I mean, Q4 is, is the, four, the, the quarter to connect. And I also love where you said your business only grows to the extent that you do. And then I did think your, your example of your sister bringing her whole team, I think that most people hesitate. Like, what if I bring my whole team? Like, who's going to actually do business while I'm gone? And I think it was just so great when I saw her and, and the whole nerd squad out there and, you know, Vegas running around together. Um, that's great for culture and community building on your team. So maybe there's something local that you can take your team to. In fact, maybe Modern Mortgage Summit next week is something great to have your your team talk on. In fact, it reminded me, we actually have a, a handful of one-to-many video strat strategies in videos that'll be part of the micro presentations there. So those of you who are wondering, well, how do I do that? Um, that's a great, those will be great uh, segments to watch uh, next week during the event. And, and maybe we'll have time and we'll play one of the actual three to five minute micro segments. Um, we're calling them micro presentations before this call is over. So we're 30 minutes into this. We've got another 30 minutes. Uh, Todd, anything else you want to ask Deborah before I share my takeaways again, go through my reflections? All right. Well, so I think, I think you're so good at setting people up for social media. You're so good at telling people, you know, how to do, you know, this whole idea of one to many. So where, is there somewhere that people can follow you to see these ideas you had about Halloween and your ideas about Thanksgiving? Where would, where would you suggest they check you out? Uh, you can go to Instagram. So funny thing, my Instagram got hacked. Um, so it used to be plug and play SM. Now it's plug and play underscore SM. And that's just kind of a, a good tip for all of you out there that um, know that you don't own your social media accounts. And there is a chance once you get 
certain amount of following, there are hackers out there. So make sure you always have that two-step verification set up. So that was my learning lesson that hopefully you guys can learn from with this, but they can go to Instagram, uh, again, plug and play underscore SM. And then again, you know, one of the other things, and I didn't mention this, so I'll, I'll make it brief, is we are getting really intentional just on a personal level with my team. We have developed a platform that's going to help loan officers and it, and this will be loan officers that choose to work with us. And maybe it's just ones that want access to our scheduling tool. It is a social media scheduling tool that's only for loan originators that will allow them to link all social accounts. So not only your Facebook business page, but also Facebook groups, which is really cool. Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, you name it, all of them. Um, but it will read the type of post. So again, I always kind of relate it to credit scores the different types of credit, revolving, installment, mortgage. That's very similar to social media. You have video post, live, just static images. Um, but the artificial intelligence will read, is this a video with a short caption and a few hashtags? Is it a graphic with a long caption? And it will auto read based off each platform when your audience is most active to know when to post that content. And so what's really cool is I can go in and I can create the content categories and I can fill those who want, you know, my team to also help with the strategy and the content creation we can, if you just want access to the tool where it gives you even more analytics and insights, um, you know, you can just use it for that purpose. But I am super excited. We're rolling that out today um, with all of my current clients that they get to be the first ones um, to jump on it. So Todd, you'll be, you'll be getting an email Ooh. shortly. That, to link your accounts and we that, created that one for you Dave. Way, oh, nice. way cool. Yeah. That sounds way cool. Yeah. So I'm well, really excited about that, but um that's where they can find me. Or, you know, always I always say schedule a discovery call. I mean, you just go to my website, it says schedule discovery call. It's a 15 minute call, it gives me some insight um, of you and your business. And then we can determine what a good strategy moving forward would be, whether you're working with us or someone else. Um so, so guys, schedule a 15-minute strategy session with Deborah. That in itself will be gold. If you've never um, spent time with her, got to know with her, that that 15 minutes is worth a lot of money. So, Deborah, when you're not talking, could you put a link in both chat and Zoom and comments in Facebook? And and so um, I'm going to transition to my reflections and in my intentions uh, for for the for q4 i i want to you know when i was thinking of all the different reflections i had what really came and bubbled to the top for me was this post this is a post that i wrote um two months ago so it's a q3 post uh it got over almost fifteen thousand views hundreds of likes um 50 comments it got a lot of engagement guys and, and so I, I kind of felt like this was an epiphany for me. Like, like I knew a lot of this stuff in this post, but I didn't really know it with clarity until I wrote it out. And so I'm going to go through a couple slides that are a little easier for you guys to see during the call. But, but my, um, I don't know, reflection takeaway for the quarter was, was that there's only 150,000 loan officers helping 59 million families achieve the American dream. So, and, and, and again, when I say only, like this is the liability side of the balance sheet for America, a uh, little over 19 trillion in equity and growing rapidly, uh, over 16 trillion in mortgage and growing rapidly. And when you look at all liabilities, there's over 35 trillion in all liabilities. That's including auto, credit cards, and student loans. Uh, a major reflection I had this quarter because we did a partnership with LoanSense is I didn't know there's 49 million families with student loans. I didn't know that. Guys, that's almost as many people that have a mortgage have student loans. And, and what blew my mind, I mean, this was like mind-blowing, that 27 million of those people with student loans are actually eligible for income-driven repayment plans or forgiveness. Guys, that's a number according to the CFPB. So that's not marketers that made up that number. That's the CFPB saying 
27 million families are sitting on savings. Like they could be reducing their student loans. So that was, wow, jaw dropping. 65% of first time home buyers have student loans. Uh, you know, those in their um, 30s and 40s have all the student debt. Uh, the number one reason for not qualifying for many first time home buyers is debt to income ratio. It's not credit issues. Now it is also down payment issues. I did a poll in our mortgage coach group saying, hey, what's the number one reason uh, first time home buyers don't qualify? And in our community, um, down payment, one, it was the number one reason, but I was shocked. Like credit was by far came in last. So, so, so here's the deal guys, there's another epiphany. Every family has the same goal that gets a mortgage. It's people don't get mortgages to have mortgages. They get mortgages to have homes and they want to be debt free at some point, or they want to be financial free at some point. Like that's what they want. Those are their biggest goals. But then check this out, guys. So the, the liability side of America, 150,000 advisors, the asset side of America, millions of advisors. Over, over a million life insurance agents in America, over 300,000 financial advisors in America, over 600,000 CPAs in America. So assets, well-staffed, well-resourced. Uh, but by the way, guys, there's only 20 million millionaires, uh, 20 million millionaires in America. So it's like those 20 million people with all the assets, well-resourced, lots of advisors, when it comes to liability management, not well-resourced. So, so that is a super clear reflection. I'm gonna put a link down below to this um, post just because uh, I'd like to see if I can get even more views, more awareness around these numbers and, and just more clarity from the mortgage coach community that guys, there is a fiscal literacy crisis in America. Most people do not know that they could um, reduce their student loans. And there's 27 million people that don't know this. Most people don't know that, hey, if I paid an extra $100 and prepaid my mortgage, they don't know how much interest they'd save. They don't know how much faster they could pay it off. Uh, most Americans don't know the concept of, hey, let's look at the cost of one loan over another over time. Like that's a foreign concept. Um, so, so like fiscal literacy crisis. And then the other reflection I had is that mortgage coach, like this community that we have can change all that. Like there is enough of us in this community. There's enough influence in this community. You guys are the most successful loan officers in America. There's over 10,000 of you. Like we're 13,000 strong now mortgage coaches. There's over 120 lenders that have built mortgage coach in their tech stack, like we're sitting on change. Like, like we can literally fix this fiscal literacy crisis with just a little more intention. And, and so um, that's my reflection. Uh, Deborah or Todd, any questions on that before I share my intention? Well, I, I loved what you said there at the end with there is enough influence in this community. And that's something that has really stuck out to me with all the calls I have all day, every day, qualifying different loan officers to see if we would be a good fit. And I just, I want to tell everybody in this group and, you know, Dave and Todd, you two, I truly appreciate those of you who are committed to taking on that responsibility and really helping families get into debt smarter and helping them with their overall household budget. And I don't know if you even are aware of how much it changes the world. I mean, I used to teach middle school and I would see how financial stress in the home affects marriages, affects kids and their ability to learn just the environment with fear and uncertainty and insecurity of I mean, a lot of the kids, their last meal was the free lunch at school on Friday. And so there's just such a domino effect and like wave to this that I, I don't even know if those who are in this group can see that unless you were in other professions and you feel it and you see it. So for those of you who do use Mortgage Coach and use TCAs, 
I just want to personally say thank you to wanting to be better than average and better than just even what a loan officer title may technically be. That's what I love about the title of a mortgage coach. It's a, it's a mindset and kind of an attitude. It's wanting to be the best. It's having some grit. Sure, it takes time to learn the tool. Can it be frustrating at first learning technology? Can you create this story that it takes too much time? You could, but once you learn it and you see the impact, it's, it's incredible. So thank you, Dave, and thank you, Todd, for doing this and helping grow this community. And for all of you who even do these calls weekly and share your wisdom. I mean, that's the other huge benefit of this community. When you talk about you guys have the influence, I mean, you have the best of the best also who are going to be speaking October 6th, the best of the best willing to share all their strategies, their tips. And I've seen the behind the scenes. I've seen some of the videos, guys. I, it is profound with what the speakers share this year. Um, and you have access to that, to just learn from you know, their errors and their, their strategies. And you just, all you have to do is pick a few, implement and execute. So um, I am so grateful for this community and for you, Dave, and for you, Todd. Well, we're grateful for you. And, uh, and you are the queen of the TCA to many. Uh, you, 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 you created that term. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool on Tuesday's TCA Tuesday call that Jeremy said his number one kind of thing going forward is that weekly TCA to many. And uh, Deborah, that wouldn't be happening without you. So you, you, you came up with that idea and then you constantly create content, mm -hmm. obviously for the loan officers that hire you to execute their content, you're, you're getting those TCA to many out, but you're also influencing and helping a lot of loan officers self-serve, create their own. Uh, so really grateful for you, Deborah. Todd, before I share my intention, anything you want to ask or say? Well, I think the numbers were astounding, right? I think, again, I, numbers matter. And those numbers were really, were really huge. But I really loved it when you said, uh, we're sitting on change. And I think that that's true, right? It's you get to choose how you want to be. This community complains all the time about Dave Ramsey and the terrible advice he's giving, um, which isn't that terrible. It just, we don't like his mortgage advice, but the rest of advice isn't bad, right? Pay off your debt. Like that's, that's okay. And um, we're sitting on change, and but then Dave said a sentence later with a little more intention, right? Again, I think intentionality matters. That's why we're talking about what we're going to commit to do to help all of you, you know, going forward. And I think what I would say when when Deborah's talking about it, you know, there's a lot of times when you're get, you know getting to coaching, someone's going to tell you to figure out your hourly rate, like what's your what's your time worth, and you know I, I can tell you that Jeremy Forsey has got a pretty stinking high hourly rate. But guess what he did? He showed up on Tuesdays to help all of you grow because he knows it's important. And what he also said on that call was, I'm going to be a little harder on people with accountability. So even though he's going to talk about self-accountability at the Modern Mortgage Summit, he's actually going to be harder on people. So again, remember, here's your intentionality, 60, 60 TCAs, people. Um, but I love it, Dave. I think uh, you always do such a good job. You're so well thought out and well prepared for this. So let's hear your intentions now going forward. So I have... Uh you know, work really hard to make time in my calendar to create, you know, Tuesday, I spend an hour, I interview someone amazing, and it's an hour. Every Friday, we spend an hour and we create this amazing content. And then at least once a week, I do another uh, interview. So I try to cut that out. And I've done that now for many years. I've disciplined myself to do that. But it's, it's super clear, especially after going through this Modern Mortgage Summit, that I need to do a better job of creating, I'm gonna call them micro lessons. Because micro content, you know, that's a Gary V term. And at the end of the day, you know, my mission is to reshape how people get into debt and to help loan officers become the captain of the wealth team, the most valuable advisor to a family that is using a mortgage to get real estate. I want you to be more valuable than CPAs, more valuable than financial planners. And, and so it's really clear, I need to lead by example. And that means I need to create more micro lessons. So we'll be editing and creating micro lessons. I just published the first one this morning with uh, Kelly Zitlow. Her and I did a, it was seven minutes, but it was from an hour where we said, what is a mortgage coach? And we created a little seven minute micro lesson. So I'm, I'm going to do a lot better of that. Like my goal is at least one of those a week where I take some of our best content 
and I turn them into clips. I turn them into micro lessons. And I've created a new playlist in our in our um, YouTube channel called Mortgage Coach Micro Lessons. So watch it grow, guys. I'm going to deliver more of that. And then, I, and then I'm going to push you guys. I'm going to push the community to create more mo- micro lessons, more 30 second to five minute videos where you're educating consumers. Uh, Deborah's calling them the one to many, but, but guys, you know, that's the thing. Like, I know that there's this problem, this fiscal literacy crisis. I know that this community can solve it, but we need to create the content. We need to be the positive news. It's one of the reasons why I'm pumped that we're doing the Modern Mortgage Summit out of American Dream. Craig Sewing and the American Dream do a great job of helping loan officers elevate their, their content and their education. But, but, but we can do more, guys. So, so really, the intentions are personally more one to five minute micro lessons um, and then pushing the community and shining a light on the micro lessons that you create uh, so that we have more one to many. Uh, so any questions or comments before we actually play a micro presentation from the Modern Mortgage Summit? Any questions or comments from either one? Well, obviously you're super busy and you know it's the same challenge and it's kind of the same question that Deborah asked me about people scheduling time to do TCA. So how, how do you plan to make sure, I mean, obviously the 9 a.m. calls on Tuesday and Friday, those are hard coded into your calendar and have been for years. How, how then do you get intentional with your time and schedule so that you can make those one to five minute micro presentations happen going forward? It is, I am glad that you asked that, Todd. Uh, I, I scheduled it. I mean, I scheduled jam sessions. Now, I'm ADD. I cannot do 90-minute jam sessions. I'm lucky if I can do a 45-minute jam session, but I've, I've scheduled 30-minute jam sessions to a week uh, to create those that micro content. Um, this morning, I actually created that Kelly Zitlow one uh, outside of a jam session. I, I replaced some of my morning reading with creating that because I was like, you know what, I gotta, I made my notes last night after I did these calls and I'm like, here's my reflection, here's my intention. And I'm like, I'm gonna be declaring that I'm gonna create more, I gotta get one done this morning. And so I, uh, I did one outside of it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna schedule it, jam sessions, win by noon style. Uh, and when I say win by noon style, that means it's done by noon or it didn't happen. Uh, and and I, I did schedule those, those call it that micro lesson jam sessions. I, I scheduled it pretty early in the morning so that I could get it done before um, distraction takes place. Well, and I appreciate the transparency. I think a lot of people, you know, there are times where you have to go out of balance like that, right? Where Dave replaced something that I know is super important to him, his reading every morning to get something done. And you don't, you don't want to go too out of balance for too long, right? It's, there's always, it's that teeter totter, right? You're never in perfect balance. You're always just kind of on the edge. And there are times where, you know, we saw it last year, right? When rates dropped, we had to get out of balance. I saw lots of our community leaders say, yeah, I'm doing TCAs for refinances, you know, from eight to midnight after I put my kids to bed and have dinner with my family. Those are times where you have to do that. And maybe that's going to be you in Q4. If you truly are too busy to schedule a little bit of time, you know, 30 minutes or less each day to do a TCA. No, there's, there's no excuse. The time. No, I, I have the time is a question of, and now I have the skill, Deborah, I'm doing it the way you taught me, you know, because I used to think I needed to use editing software to make micro content, but Deborah taught me a hack with an iPhone, everybody. You, there's actually a feature that you can record your screen. So literally the micro content that I'm going to, I mean, my team is also going to create my, micro lessons, but the ones I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the screen capture in that's native in the iPhone while watching it from our YouTube channel. Well, so that's good. Deborah can do a micro lesson on how to do that for all of us. So well, Deborah, I'm, would you, I'm, I will. Would you, and I'm so glad you bring that up because I, I probably every day, there's at least one person that asks me, how do I record the content? Like they really overthink it. And so I show that I actually use this group as my example. I'm like this, I'm literally recording this right now on zoom with a webcam, a cheap ring light and a mic, which you don't even need this microphone, but so much of what you can do, you don't, you don't have to buy the studio lights and the, I have a fancy Canon camera. I don't even use it for these. So don't overthink it sometimes. And this little 
nugget. I'll make sure to make a little micro lesson for you, Dave and Todd, that we can share to the community. Um, but also, if you are doing Zoom calls with clients, for those who are listening, you guys can do the exact same thing that Dave's talking about, where there's going to be little micro nuggets that you could screen record, and I'll, I'll teach y'all how to do that. But you probably have those little bites of wisdom too in your Zoom meetings that you're already hosting with your clients without revealing who they are and that confidentiality. But you could literally do the same thing. Well, we'll the mortgage coach team is going to create more micro content and you'll, you'll know what that is. I mean, it's going to be super polished, super clean, but I am personally going to do it and I'm going to use nothing but my iPhone and the record feature that's native in an iPhone. And I will do um, some of them. I'll use iMovie because I'll screen cap, I'll screen record something that's in YouTube and then I'll record myself with my phone, putting, framing it. So putting a frame is Renee Rodriguez on it. And then I'll connect those with iMovie. So just know that when you see me execute every week between now and the end of the month, or not the end of the month, the end of the year with a micro lesson, just know that nothing but my mobile phone. And I guarantee you, none of them, you know, now that I know how to do it, will take me more than 10 to 15 minutes. Like it's going to be quick. It's going to be easy. Um, and it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned on that. So guys, let's do this. We got nine minutes left. Let's play a micro presentation from the Modern Mortgage Summit. Uh, this is, I think, a very um, on point one. It is going to be Deborah's twin sister, Denise Donahue, $190 million a year producer, uh, the mortgage nerd. She has a keynote and she's got two micro presentations. Let's play the one where she's talking about TCA to many. So let's check it out, guys. Are you ready to blow the mind of a group of real estate agents so that you can gain more partners? I'm going to share this super easy trick that we probably do all day, every day, but it's how to leverage your total cost analysis in a way that gets you more realtor partners that weren't using you before. So listen up. One of the things I did at the start of this year was I put together a realtor mastermind. So I sent an email out to all the real estate agents and I said, hey, I'm hosting a real estate mastermind. I'm going to be sharing strategies with you that are going to help you and your clients get offers accepted. Because in this last market, holy smokes, getting offers accepted was the hard part. So as a loan officer, I thought to myself, how could I be a valuable partner to help them with it? So I got all of them together and I shared these three total cost analysis. And all I did, folks, nothing fancy. I know that sometimes my marketing can seem fancy. That's the nerd in me, but techie stuff, not so great. I printed out on a sheet of paper these total cost analysis and I had them on the table when each real estate agent came in. I shared the cost of waiting one year and I walked them through how to read the chart. And then we went over the analysis of, you know, the rate of return on that decision, whether it be eight years or 10 years or whatnot. Then we shared the appraisal gap strategy. This one, holy cow, golden ticket, agents, eat this up. It's not even rocket science for us. You know, we're just essentially changing the down payment, but they don't know that. And so when they hear appraisal gap strategy, they're like, wow, I wonder how many deals I could have got accepted had I been working with a lender partner that offered an appraisal gap strategy. Then the third one was the rent versus own strategy. And the reason why this one was so important this year is in our market, if you had an FHA buyer, it just, I mean, it was almost like you would get them pre-qualified and you'd send them to the real estate agent and you're like, hey, we just got Susie pre-qualified, FHA, 300,000. They're like, are you kidding me? I'm going to be spending every weekend in my car showing them houses and they're not going to get an offer accepted because it's FHA. And so then we'd have to go back to the client and be like, okay, let's see how we can get you conventional. And we started experiencing buyers and real estate agents getting something called buyer fatigue. 
So again, I said, mm, I'm going to share the strategy and I'm going to show the client it, before you throw in that towel, I'm going to show you that if you throw in the towel and say, I'm just going to wait a year, what that cost is with renting versus owning and where your purchasing power is going to be if you continue to rent versus if you own. And in this example, I mean, it was insane. You show clients and real estate agents the numbers behind that decision and they start doing this, which means they take the towel back because they're like, okay, I'm not ready to quit. Let me work on my credit to get it conventional or let me go ahead and ask grandma for that gift so that we can write a conventional offer. Here's my point. Real estate agents aren't used to seeing this. In fact, most loan officers that even prepare these, you only share it with the client. We're not sharing it to real estate agents. So take some examples, put it on a piece of paper, host an event, and show your partners what you do for their clients. And the ones that aren't using you, make sure you ask the question. I learned this in my uh, High Trust Academy. Ask the question, how many deals do you think you lost this year because you weren't working with a mortgage planner that utilizes strategy? And then let them speak. And they will literally be thinking of every client that they spent every weekend going around looking at homes that didn't have appraisal gap strategy or was only FHA qualified. And they will be so mad at that lender that they're like, Ugh, I'm only using you from now on. It is so powerful. And if you want to up the ante a little bit, start sharing this on social media. It works the same way because when consumers see this information, they will think to themselves, my loan officer didn't do that. I didn't get a strategy. I was just given a fee sheet. Man, they really know what they're doing. Share your total cost analysis on social media, pair it with a story and convey that you are different. You will get people reaching out to you to do business versus you having to reach out to them. So I hope you like those three strategies. Book your realtor mastermind and let them know you're a loan officer with a strategy. Ba boom. And that is a professional, my friend, that has the captain of wealth mindset. Like, like she knows who she is. She knows how valuable she is to a family. She knows that talking to her for a first time home buyer is more valuable than talking to any CPA, any financial planner, any realtor, because she has the captain of wealth mindset. So guys, that is my intention for you. If you tune into this community, if you come to these calls, that, that, you, you will not only be the best loan officer, but you will be the most valuable advisor in the local market that you serve. But guys, you got to do the work. You got to do the TCA a day. That means you need to go to Todd's uh, win by noon uh, Mondays. And, and that means like, if you're a leader on this call, like Jeremy Forcier, he's a leader. I mean, not only did he do a TCA Tuesday um, group coaching session for mortgage coach, he did one for his 50 loan officers. you got to be a leader. And guys, and if you don't know Deborah and you don't know when by, or excuse me, one to many, like how to do a one to many TCA, well, then you're not, you're not taking that mindset that I'm the captain of the wealth team and I'm going to be the most valuable professional advisor in my local market at giving people fiscal literacy. Like everybody needs to know there's a solution that they should go through to optimize their purchase power if they have a student loan. Everybody needs a total cost analysis when they do rent versus own. So I just ranted, Deborah. I'm sure you got a few things to say after hearing seeing that video. Any closing thoughts you have? I'm just so proud of her because <laughs> it's been a work in progress that I think most don't see. But um, ironically, I had a conversation with Eric Mitchell yesterday and he said he did Amplify and he had a broker owner in, out of Texas who knew Denise because of her social media. And he was like, you should reach out to her. And the agent literally said, oh no, I feel like she's probably out of my league. And he was so mind boggled the fact that an agent would say that about a lender. And it's just because she's present on social media. And again, the motive is to teach. Cause I think when you're a leader, you're a good teacher. <laughs> and so that's all you're doing is you're just putting out good financial literacy out 
into this, this sphere that now thanks to the internet and social media, you can touch more family. So I think it's great. Love I think it. you crushed it. And I think that uh, those of you who are crazy and haven't signed up for the Modern Mortgage Summit, remember you get 30 days access when you sign up or you can upgrade and get a whole year of access to it. You know, I mean, it's, it's the best of the best in our industry all pouring into you, regardless of whether you're new or whether you're super experienced, you know, it's going to, it's going to have stuff that touches it all real quick, guys. Can you guys do me a favor? I'm going to pull up my video. We got to, it's, it's Adam's birthday. We got to just wish him a quick happy birthday to Adam, since he is the backbone of the modern mortgage summit technology and win by noon. So, all right, Dave and Deborah, I'm, we shouldn't sing though. Right. But at least how do we want to do this? Just let's just say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Adam. We appreciate you, my friend. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Adam. And, and guys, I want to just, for anyone who doesn't know Adam, I want to show the quality of his work. Uh, you know, when I saw this, this is less than a minute. So it's a 44 second presentation. And it, it, it just made me feel like I'm lucky to have the role I have in the mortgage space. I'm lucky to be in mortgage. Uh, so let's just see some of Adam's work uh, as we wrap up today's call. Check it out, guys. But accountability shouldn't be a four letter word. When it's really hard, there's the opportunity to have something special and meaningful. Our focus is always on our process of building a stronger culture. So as a modern day mortgage advisor, it's more important than ever that we are connecting with people's heart and not just their brain. Hang around people who have what you want, do what they do, and you'll get what they've got. So guys, every Friday, we are bringing great minds together to help you, to help inspire you to be a better you. And next Wednesday, eight o'clock, we will be doing the Modern Mortgage Summit broadcasted live out of San Diego. Uh, look forward to seeing you, Deborah and Todd, live and in person next, uh, next Wednesday. And Guys, happy Q4. Have an awesome day. Have an amazing weekend. This is a wrap. Share this with your mortgage friends and uh, let's kick some butt. 60 TCAs, my friends. Come on, let's do it. Woo! Let's go. Take care, y'all. This All is right, a wrap. See you next week.